Hello and welcome. My name is Leah. Thank you for joining me today for this vinyasa flow class. In this class, we'll be targeting lengthening the spine, finding space between the vertebrae in order to tap into a more calm sense of being and mindfulness. This class will be designed to help expand the spine and create space for the flow of movement and ultimately to connect to divine consciousness. Allowing chi energy to flow naturally up and down the spine through the chakras and to flush out any toxins, to flush out any negative dense energies that do not belong in your system. It's a good idea to have blocks and a blanket handy for modifications. I'll be giving you different variations for the poses. We will be working toward a mermaid peak pose today, and that will be done from pigeon. So thank you for joining me. Let's get started. We're gonna begin by finding ourselves at the top of the mat. Having our feet equidistance to our hips, stacked below, finding ourselves in mountain pose. Bring your hands into prayer pose in front of the chest. Flip your eyelids closed and allow yourself to tune into your breath. Breathing in deeply through the nose, feeling the chest expand, pulling the air all the way into your belly and then exhaling through the nose. Allowing your breath to become deeper with every inhale. If any thoughts begin to arise, take notice of them, but do not engage. Allow your focus to be on your breath. Imagine your breath like a continuous wave crashing forward onto the shore with every inhale and then exhaling, rolling back. Bring your awareness now to between your palms. Notice what the sensations feel like, having that gentle compression between your left and right hand. Gently drop your hands toward your sides. Keep your eyes closed and bring your palms facing forward by your side. Notice any shifts in energy with this slight change. Maybe noticing some sensations in the front of the palm or the fingertips. On the next inhale, flip your eyelids open and allow your arms to gently rest by your sides. Let's begin by rocking forward and back onto our heels and toes, finding a little bit of balance play. Lifting our heels up, pressing into the top of our feet and then pressing into our heels to lift the toes off the mat. Now find that midway point between both actions and let yourself become rooted here. 
and then slowly begin to lift the inside portion of your feet up, rocking onto the outside portion of your foot, and then press down with the inside portion, lifting the outside portion up, shifting back and forth between this action. finding some movement in the ankle here and then bring yourself right in between both movements anchoring our feet down rooting all four corners into the mat this time begin to lift all of your toes off of the mat keeping the rootedness of your foot and then spread your toes wide finding space in between finding a stretch in the metatarsals and then gently begin to lower your big toes down, followed by the next toe and the next until you reach your pinky. Take an inhale here and exhale. Inhale, arms come to rise above head, gaze is in between your hands, slight back bend. Exhale, lower arms down. Inhale, rising. Back bend, chest reaches up out of the lower back. Exhale, lower arms down. Inhale, hold the rise this time. Interlace your fingers, keeping your index finger out and your thumb out, making an arrow mudra such as this. Reaching your finger, your pointer finger up toward the ceiling but pulling your shoulders away from the ears. Begin to press firmly into that left foot. Inhale, exhale, side bend, leaning toward the right side, finding elongation in the left side body, making sure to wrap that left shoulder back towards the back of the room to keep your shoulders in alignment. Inhale, come to rise. Exhale, side bend toward the left side. Shifting weight onto the right foot this time to find that rootedness. Pulling out of our low back, slightly engaging the core. Inhale, come to rise. Unbind your hands, keep your hands raised high. Take your left foot and curtsy it behind your right leg, finding a little bit of a bend in that right knee. And then begin to grab your left wrist with your right hand on the inhale and exhale, side bend, leaning to your right side, pulling that left arm by the wrist, elongating deepening into the left side body here. Inhale, returns back to center. Replant that left foot. Take your right wrist by your left hand. Curtsy, right foot behind, left leg. Inhale, slight bend, left side. Still thinking about wrapping that right shoulder back to open up the chest toward the front of the room. and return back to center. Unbind your wrist, reach your fingers up toward the sky, gently bend your knees, coming into a chair pose. Tailbone is reaching back, chest is pulling through the shoulders, knees are not passing the toes. You should be able to see your toes in this position. Inhale here, exhale, reach your arms back, squeezing your triceps, reaching your fingertips back behind you. Inhale and exhale. Bind your hands behind your back. Inhale, slight back bend, reaching your hands toward the floor below you. Exhale, forward fold over bent knees, bringing your belly to your thighs, reaching your fist above your head toward 
the front side of the room. Inhale, unbind, come back into chair. Exhale, straighten your legs out. Inhale, exhale, swan dive down, keeping a slight bend to your knees, finding yourselves in forward fold. Take your, take your index and middle finger and wrap it around the bottom base portion of your toe. Take your thumb and press it on the nail bed of your big toe. Inhale, slightly straighten out your knees, finding elongation in the spine. Exhale, bend your elbows to the sides, forward folding. Inhale, keeping the bind lifting. Exhale, forward fold, finding depth, slowly straightening out those knees. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, folding forward. Unbind your fingers, press into your shins, coming into a halfway lift on the inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Plant your hands down, step your left foot back, coming into a low lunge, dropping that left knee, and then bring your right knee to meet your left knee, and then we're going to uncurl our toes to sit back onto our heels. Here, we're gonna drop our chin to our chest and begin to take gentle neck rolls, left and right. Pulling our right ear to right shoulder, coming down into the center, and then left ear, left shoulder. Rotating back and forth. Pull your chin toward your chest and then gently lift your head back to neutral. We're going to be doing some chaturangas today, so let's warm up our wrists to prepare for that. Extend your arms out long. Pull your fingertips toward the wrist forearm area and then fold forward at the wrist. Finding some motion here, inflection and extension. Make fists with your hands, pull your elbows in and begin to roll out your wrists. Inward for a few reps and then reverse directions. Take your hands together, interlace your fingers, palms facing each other, and then begin to push your palms away from the body, stretching out your elbows. Inhale, arms reach up, slight back bend. Exhale, bring your hands down. Inhale, reaching up, slight back bend, chest lifts between the shoulders. Exhale, hands come down. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, hands come down. Place your hands on your knees. And we're gonna take a few cat cows in the rock pose position, so. Inhale, pulling chest between the shoulders. Exhale, rounding, caving in. Chin pulls to your chest. Inhale, reaching forward. Exhale, rounding in. Inhale, reaching. Exhale, rounding in. Beautiful. Let's begin to walk ourselves into the tabletop shape, finding a quadruped position. Here we have our wrists stacked underneath our shoulders. Our knees are stacked underneath our hips. On an inhale here, bring your tailbone up toward the sky and then begin to bring the back of your head toward your tailbone. Exhale, rounding your tailbone inward, tucking your chin toward your chest for cat pose, pushing into the base of your palm. Inhale, 
cow pose. Exhale, rounding into cats. Allow your breath to sequence the movement, finding space with every inhale and exhalation. Find yourself in neutral spine. On the inhale, lift your left arm up, gazing at the left fingertips, twisting the mid thoracic area, keeping your hips, your pelvis framing the mat. Exhale, lower arm down, weave it underneath right. Inhale, lifting arm up. Exhale, weaving it through. Inhale, one last time, hold, twisting. Exhale, lower it down. Inhale, right arm comes to rise. Inhale, exhale, weave it through. Inhale, rise. Exhale, weave it through. Inhale, one last time, hold for a moment. Exhale, lower arm down. On the inhale, extend left leg out, pulling our toes toward our mat and reaching our heel back towards the back side of the mat, pressing through the heel, holding here. And then inhale, reach right arm forward, finding elongation in the spine, pressing into the left palm, Exhale, lower right hand down, keep left leg lifted. Kick left leg out toward the side. Coming into gate pose, lifting up here. This might be a good time to have a block. Inhaling in gate pose, exhaling, dropping right hand down, maybe using a block here for leverage. Shifting weight onto the right hand to lift that left leg off of the mat. Finding a modified side plank here. Bend your left knee, pull it toward your chest, and then plant your left foot on the mat out in front of you. Press into your left fingertips to lift yourself back up into a low lunge. And here you might wanna grab both of your blocks and bring them on both sides in case you need a little bit of extra, in case you need a little bit of extra leverage. We're going to rock forward and back on that front leg to find a little bit of hamstring flexibility using your blocks to maintain some height. Keeping your breath continuous. On the next straight knee, hold there and walk your blocks back with you to find a deeper stretch in your hamstring. Try to press your palms into the blocks to keep your chest lifted. And then you're reaching slightly over that knee with your chest. Walk your blocks back forward. And then take your block to your right side, right on the inner side of the left foot. Plant your right hand on the block, curl your back toes under, straighten out right leg, and then lift your left arm up for a twist. Gaze is at the left thumb. Inhale and exhale, drop back knee down, lower left hand. Take your block back out toward your side.
press yourself onto the block, lift your left arm up, and then kick your leg into your chest, extend it out long to the left side of your mat, and then push into your right hand, lifting yourself up into gate pose. Lower your hands down to your mat, walk them forward, back into that tabletop shape, and return your left leg down. Take your block to your left side this time in preparation for the opposite side. Inhale straightens out, right leg behind, wrapping toes downward toward the mat, pressing through the heel, finding strength in the glutes to lift that leg and keeping our hips, our pelvis framing toward the mat below us. Hold here. Inhale, lifting left arm to rise, finding spinal balance. Pushing through our heel and simultaneously reaching through those left fingertips. Inhale, exhale, plant your left hand down, kick your right foot out toward the right side of the mat, and then walk your fingertips toward you, lifting yourself up into gate pose finding an oppositional reach of the arms. Inhale, exhale, lower left hand down onto the block beside you, reaching right arm up, and then lift your left, lift your right foot off of the mat, finding a modified side plank. Inhale, and exhale, pull knee toward your chest for a squeeze, and then plant it out on the mat in front of you, coming into a low lunge, facing the right leg. Hold here for a moment, inhale, and exhale. Take your blocks and bring them alongside that right foot and use the leverage from your bro use the leverage from your blocks to roll back and forth opening up the right hamstring on the next straightened knee Bring your blocks back with you and allow yourself to hold this hamstring stretch, reaching your chest forward. Trying not to round caving your chest inward toward your leg, keeping your chest lifted, but reaching it forward toward your shin. Beautiful. Bend that right knee, plant your left block down on the inside of your right foot. Tuck your back toes under, press your palm into your block, lift your left leg off of the mat. Inhale, reach right fingertips up toward the sky for a twist. Holding here for a moment. Exhale, lower hand down, lower knee to the mat. Take the block and replant it on the left side. Press your left hand into the block. Bring your right knee toward your chest for a squeeze and then kick it out to the mat beside you. Lift your right arm up. Inhale, come into gate pose. Exhale, plant your hands down to your mat. Replace your right leg. We're going to make our way into downward dog. So curl your back toes under, hover your knees off of the mat. Inhale, exhale, push your hips back, pressing into your finger beds, pressing into the palms, and then gently walk your hands forward to elongate your spine. Allowing ourselves to sink into our breath for three deep inhales and exhalations. Three, 
through the nose and with every exhale, allowing our chest to slowly, softly come toward the mat below us. Gaze is directly down at your mat. Begin to bend and straighten your knees, alternating, finding some movement, some fluid, some fluidity in the knee joint. Bend and extend both knees at the same time. And then push your hips back, finding stationary downward dog one last time. Inhale, right heel comes to rise. Wrapping right toes downward toward the mat, pressing into the heel, lifting the hip. Bend your knee and begin to make outward circles, opening up the hip. And gently reverse directions. Now extend the leg. Exhale, hover knee to chest. Hold for a moment. Plant your hand. Plant your foot between your hands. Come onto your fingertips and then pivot your back foot 45 degrees, coming up into warrior, into warrior one. one, framing the right side. Here you want heel to heel alignment, or if you need a little bit more stability, open up your hips, walk that right foot out to the side, pressing with the outer right hip to create stability and pressing with the knife edge portion of your back foot. Chest is framing toward the front of the mat, reaching arms up high. Inhale. And exhale, reach your arms back forward, fold gently over that front leg. Clasp your hands behind your back. On the inhale, pull your fist down toward the mat, slight back bend, pulling navel towards spine, lifting your chest. And exhale, forward fold, leading over that right leg, hip hinging, slight balance act here. Think about bringing your right heel back energetically and the inside of your left foot is pulling upward toward that front flank. So you're having both legs squeeze toward each other. Inhale, come to rise, warrior one. Pivot back foot so that your heel lifts off of the mat, coming into crescent. Inhale, exhale, twist over the right side, reaching arms in opposition, holding here. Inhale, exhale, reach back into crescent. Exhale, frame front foot, plant your hands. Step right foot back, coming into plank. Lower down knees, chest, chin, or go straight to Chaturanga if it's in your practice. Lift up to Cobra or Upward Facing Dog. Tuck your back toes under, push up, Downward Facing Dog. Inhale and exhale. On your inhale, lift your left heel to rise, wrapping toes downward toward the mat, squeezing your leg up. Bend your knee and begin to make outward circles with the knee opening up the hip on the left side, pressing down with your right heel simultaneously. And then opposite direction, circling out. Inhale, straighten leg out, extend. Exhale, pull, hover knee to chest. Plant foot between your hands. Pivot back foot 45 degrees coming into warrior one, framing the left side. Arms reach up high, wrapping left hip back, right hip forward to frame your hips toward the front of the mat, reaching fingertips toward the sky. Inhale, exhale, reach arms back, 
hover over that left leg. Bind your hands behind your back. On the next inhale, push. On the next inhale, push your palms down toward the mat. Lift your chest up. Pull navel towards spine. Slight back bend. Inhale and exhale, forward fold over that front leg, reaching, hands up toward the sky. Inhale, unbind hands, push up, warrior one. Lift your back heel, coming into crescent. Inhale, exhale, Twist toward the left side. Gaze is at the left fingertips. Inhale, return, crescent, reaching up high. Exhale, plant hands down, framing left foot, coming into plank, and lowering down knees, chest, chin, or directly. If you're going to go into chaturanga, you're going to bring your shoulders slightly over your wrist, tuck, wrap your elbows forward, Bend your elbows back toward the back side of the room, lowering down. Inhaling cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale here. And exhale. Sinking into your dog. Next inhale, bring right leg to rise. Heel comes toward the sky, framing your hips toward the mat. Exhale, pull knee to chest for a hover. Squeeze your knee in toward your chest. Plant your foot between your hands. Come onto your fingertips and drop that back knee down, coming into a low lunge. Pressing into the top of your knee for a slight back bend, opening up your left hip, rising your chest through your shoulders. Beautiful. Taking a moment here, inhaling, exhaling. Inhale, arms come to rise. Exhale, arms come down to the ground. Plant your hands, curl back toes under, coming into crescent lunge on the inhale, framing the right foot out in front. A few deep inhales and exhales here. Inhale and exhale, open up warrior two. Finding length in your spine, drawing that right outer hip toward the right side corner of your mat. And you have heel to heel alignment here. Making sure your chest is lifted, pulling out of your lower back, slightly tucking your navel in toward your spine. Flip your front palm forward, inhale, reach forward, and slight back bend to revolve. Back hand is placed on the outer left thigh area. Inhale, exhale, right elbow comes to right knee and lift left arm up overhead for a reach side angle. Gaze is at your left fingertips, finding length in the left side body. Inhale, warrior two. We're going to find our way into triangle pose. So it might be good to have a block candy, placing it right along the inner portion of your right foot. So from warrior two, we're going to inhale, exhale, straighten front knee, reach, reach forward with the right hand, place right hand on top of the block. Coming into our triangle pose, reaching left arm up high, pulling through the fingertips. Gaze can be at that left thumb. 
opening up the right hamstring. Bend your front knee. Inhale, lifts you back up to warrior two. Exhale, pivot onto left foot, coming into crescent, reaching both arms up overhead. Beautiful. Hold here for a moment. Pushing back with that left heel, pressing into the right heel in the front. Take your back foot and step it a few inches forward and then pivot so that way you're at a 45 degree angle. Coming into warrior one. We're gonna take our block and place it on the outer portion of our right leg, so as so. We're gonna make our way into a twisted triangle pose. So take a deep inhale Exhale, twisting left hand to block, reaching right hand up, straightening out front leg. If you need a little bit more height on your block, you can turn it to this direction and that will give you a little bit more leverage. So we're finding a twist, reaching our chest to the right side of the mat, really hugging our inner thighs together to create stability in the legs. Finding our strength here. Bend front knee, come back warrior one. Pivot onto the ball of the back foot, crescent. Inhale, exhale, lower hands down. Coming into plank, drop knees. And inhale, cow pose, uncurl toes. Exhale, cat. Back to center on the inhale. We're gonna take another spinal balance here. So inhale, lifts left arm. Inhale, lifts right leg. Finding elongation in the spine. And this time we're gonna play with a bind. So bend right knee. And then take your left hand, reach it back behind you, see if you can grab your toes. Press into the palm of your front hand and maybe curl those back toes under if you need a little extra stability. Pressing the top of your foot into your hand as you pull your foot forward, creating a counter. Opening up that right hip. Inhale, reach, elongate. Exhale, lower hand and knee down. Tuck your toes under. Press your hips back, downward facing dog. Take a deep inhale here, through the nose. Exhale, side out. On the next inhale, left heel rises. Exhale, bend the knee. Bring knee toward chest for hover, squeeze up, pressing into your palms. Plant foot between your hands. Keep the back toes tucked under, lifting yourself up into crescent pose. Holding here for a moment. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, open up warrior two. You have heel to heel alignment here, bending into that front knee, reaching arms in opposition, finding our strength in the pose. Take a few deep inhales, getting yourself situated. Flip front palm up. Inhale, reach, reach, reach forward, and then revolve back, creating elongation in the left side body. Right hand is on the outer thigh or calf area. Inhale, back to warrior two. 
Exhale, left elbow to left thigh. Reach right arm up over your right ear, elongating the right side body in side angle. Gaze can be at right fingertips. Inhale back to center, warrior two. And we're gonna make our way to our triangle pose once again on the other side. We're going to straighten out front knee. Inhale, reach, reach, reach with your left hand coming down into triangle, framing your trunk toward the right side of the mat maybe having your block underneath your left hand for a little bit of leverage. Finding length in the left hamstring. If you don't wish to use a block or you don't have one handy, you can play with using the outer, you can play with using the back portion of your left hand against your left shin. Really thinking about raising Fingertips of the right hand up toward the sky, hugging your inner thighs together to stabilize your, your feet. Inhale back to warrior two. Exhale. Inhale, crescent. Pivot your right heel 45 degrees, coming on to, coming into warrior one, framing the left foot, making sure that right hip is pulling forward, left hip is pulling back, squeezing your thighs together, reaching your fingertips up and threading your chest through. Maybe walk your back foot in a few inches. And then we're gonna take that twisted triangle on the opposite side. Have your block ready on the outer portion of your left foot. And then we're going to straighten out front leg, twist toward our block, taking our right hand to the block and reaching our left hand up toward the sky. Maybe play with setting to see if you need a little bit more height for the twist. Pull navel in to promote stability of the low back. Inhale here. Exhale, return warrior one. Pivot back to crescent. Exhale, lower hands down, framing left foot. Drop right knee down coming into low lunge on the left side this time. Reaching fingertips high, deep inhale here and exhale. Inhale, exhale, frame left foot. Stepping back into our quadruped shape once more. On an inhale, we're gonna take spinal balance, reaching right hand this time, left foot. Finding elongation in the body, in the spine, framing our hips toward the mat, tucking our navel toward our spine, pressing through with the back heel, reaching with our right fingertips. Inhale and exhale, bend that left leg. Try to reach back with your right hand to grab the top of your left foot, pushing your foot into your hand, coming into a bind. If this is not accessible to you today, just play with reaching back toward your foot. On the inhale, reach, elongate. Exhale, replant right hand and left knee. Tuck your toes under, push your hips back. 
downward facing dog. Inhale and exhale, side out. Find some depth in your dog. We're gonna work our way into our peak pose, which is pigeon, optional, mermaid bind. On the inhale, rise right heel up, holding, pushing through the right heel toward the back of the room, keeping your pelvis in line with the mat below you. Exhale, hover knee to chest, squeeze tight. Plant foot between your hands. And let's hold this low lunge on our fingertips and just begin to rock forward and back, finding a little bit of hip opening here. We're gonna shift our way into lizard pose before we find ourselves in pigeon. Hold steady on your low lunge and begin to walk your right foot toward the right side of your mat and take both hands in the inner side of your right foot. There's a few options we can take here. If you feel like you need your blocks, you can have them handy and place them underneath your hands to keep yourself a little bit more lifted, create a little bit of stability. You can drop your back knee to take some of the tension out of your hip. Pressing into your hands, pressing into the top of your back foot for stability if your knee is on the mat. And see what it feels like to maybe rock that right knee out toward the side, opening up your hip a little bit differently. If you feel any tension in the knee with that, feel free to go back to just regular lizard pose or you can walk your right foot forward a bit and then just lean it out again and see if the tension has changed. Ultimately, we wanna work with our bodies and find what feels good. We never wanna cause any strain in our bodies. Just finding our edge and playing underneath of it a little bit, playing into it. If you feel comfortable here, then maybe come onto your forearms. If you have blocks out in front, this will take you a little bit deeper. Finding deep inhales and exhales to help open up that back hip flexor and prepare us for a pigeon. Slowly begin to push your hands into your blocks if you're onto your forearms and move them out of the way, out in front. Take the inner portion of your right foot and press it down toward the mat and begin to walk your right foot toward the left side of the mat. Dropping down onto that right shin and maybe tucking your right heel toward that left inner thigh hip flexor area. Here we find ourselves in pigeon pose and there's a lot of different variations we can take here. First and foremost, you wanna make sure your left hip is pulling down toward the mat, left hip down toward your left heel. That way you're not sinking into the right side too much. and pressing into your fingertips to lift your chest up, squeezing your navel toward your spine to take any compression out of your lower back. Deep inhales and exhales here. Maybe closing your eyes, just finding some length here in your spine.
and then let's try to walk our fingertips forward coming onto our forearms. If that doesn't feel comfortable, feel free to stay lifted. You can also use your blocks underneath your forearms to give you some height. Allowing each breath to sink you in deeper into the pose. If you feel like you can go further, you can make a pillow, in, you can make your hands into a pillow and rest your forehead on top. Slowly begin to make your way back up into your rising pigeon. And tuck that right heel in just a little bit more. We're gonna attempt our mermaid pigeon. If you don't feel like this pose is comfortable for you, feel free to stay in upright pigeon. Take your block under your right hand and then begin to press Begin to press your left foot in toward your glutes. And then take your left hand and reach behind to grab the inner portion of your left foot. Maybe you are here today. If you would like to try to go deeper, pull the foot into your left elbow crease. You're gonna feel a stretch in your quadriceps hip flexors. We're really thinking about reaching our chest toward the front of the mat, so twisting a little bit so that way we're framing toward the front. Chest is lifted, navel is pulling toward your spine to protect your low back. If you feel comfortable here and you would like to go further, take your right hand over your head, reach toward your left ear, and then see if you can make a clasp with your hands. If you're in this position, try to draw your right elbow back and pull your left shoulder forward, but not pushing past your limitations, finding a stretch in your quadricep, but working with your current state in your practice. Slowly begin to unwind. Take your left foot into your left hand and then gently lower that foot down. Move your block out of the way. Press into your hands, curl your back toes under to lift that knee up. Take it back toward the right to meet and drop your knees down. Come into a child's pose for a moment. taking a counter to our back bend. When you're ready, press into your hands, come up into your quad drooped shape, curl your back toes under, and press your hips up, downward facing dog. So now we're gonna make our way to the left side. Same sequence, left heel comes to rise. On the inhale, pressing the heel toward the back of the room. Toes are wrapping down toward the mat. Exhale, hover knee to chest for a squeeze. And then plant left foot between your hands, coming into a low lunge on our fingertips. It is perfectly fine. It is perfectly fine to have blocks underneath your hands to keep leverage in this pose. We're gonna rock forward and back finding some opening in the hip.
Begin to walk your left foot toward the left side of the mat, coming into our, our, coming into our lizard pose. Drop that right knee down gently. If you feel any tension in the back knee, feel free to use a blanket underneath. The pressure should not be on the kneecap. If it is, then a blanket would be a good choice for this position. Allow your left knee to rock out just a little bit if it feels comfortable opening up your hip a little bit further. And if you feel comfortable, maybe coming down onto your forearms, finding a deeper lizard pose. Don't forget, you can use blocks here. Allowing deep inhales and exhales to sink us deeper. Not forcing anything, just working with our body's tolerance for today. Slowly begin to make your way back up. And we're going to heel toe our left foot toward the right side of the mat. Lower that left shin down to the mat and maybe, and pull our left heel in toward our right groin hip area. Our pigeon pose on the left side facing, making sure we're hugging our right hip downward, pulling our left hip back, lifting through the chest, pulling our navel toward our spine. You can use blocks here if you want to get a little bit more of a lift. Definitely not trying to dump any weight in our spine, in our low back. If you feel comfortable, maybe come down onto your forearms out in front. Deepening our stretch here, letting every exhale find depth in the body. And maybe making a pillow with our hands coming all the way down for a sleeping pigeon. When you're ready, begin to press into your hands to lift yourself up and walk your hands back towards your body. Take your block toward your left side. Press into your block with your left hand and bend that right knee if you feel like it's accessible to you. Take your right hand, reach back toward your inner right foot for a bind, making sure to Tuck our navel toward our spine. If you feel comfortable here, maybe pulling that right foot into the right hip, into the right elbow crease. Making sure we're pulling that left shoulder back. Right shoulder is pulling forward. And if this feels okay and you'd like to go deeper, take that left hand over top of your head, reaching for your right ear, and maybe go for the clasp, finding your mermaid, framing the left leg, trying to reach, aiming to reach our chest toward the front of the mat. Gently begin to unbind, grab your right foot, 
and slowly allow the foot to lower down to the mat. Press into your hands, curl your back toes under to lift up into a plank. Drop both knees down and push back child's pose. Take a moment here to counter that deep stretch. Press into your hands, tuck your toes under, and come into downward dog. Take a deep inhale here, and exhale. We're gonna make our way into a boat pose and cool down our practice from there. So let's take an inhale, gaze in between our thumbs. On your knees, step, hop, or jump in between your hands, coming into a forward fold. And on the inhale, we're gonna roll ourselves up into chair pose. We're going to make our way into boat pose to fire up the core one last time before we move into our core, before we move into our cool down phase. Begin to lift your heels, bend your knees, and come to sit on your heels. Reach your arms forward and gently lower your bum to the ground, coming into a boat pose. Take your hands into arrow mudra, and we're going to inhale, exhale, twisting, reaching towards our left side, past our left outer thigh. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, twisting to the right. And let's do this two more times, each side keeping ourselves lifted in our boat pose. Hold center, open up your knees and pull your knees toward your armpits. Reach forward with your fingertips. Bring your knees back together and lower them down. Release your grip. Take our left leg and bring it down onto the mat. Hug our right knee toward our chest, and then take both hands and wrap around the bottom of the foot, pressing our foot into our hands. And if you feel comfortable straightening out the leg, or maybe keeping a slight bend to protect your hamstrings, Finding some deep inhales and exhales here. A little bit of a balanced posture. Really thinking about lifting up out of our low back. Take your left hand, weave it under your right arm and grab the outer portion of your right foot. And then begin to take your right hand behind, coming into a seated twist. Keeping that right knee bent if it makes the pose more accessible to you. Otherwise, pushing into your left hand with your foot, finding a deep twist. Maybe gazing back at that right hand. Inhale, exhale, come back to that right foot and bring that left heel, reach it past your left outer thigh, coming into a cross-legged position. Inhale, both arms come up overhead. Exhale, twisting to the right side, taking your left arm and pressing it against the top of your right leg. Gaze is over top that right shoulder.
come back to center, uncross your right leg, and begin to plant your left foot back onto the mat. Take your right leg and weave it underneath your left. We're going to lift that left leg off of the mat. Take both hands and wrap them underneath the left foot and begin to push your foot forward, pulling your hands toward you, maybe straightening out that left leg. Otherwise, you can keep it bent if it feels more comfortable. Finding the heron pose on the left side. Begin to bend your left knee. Take your right hand, reach it to the outside of your left foot and begin to press into your hand with your foot, twisting toward your left side. If you find this is too difficult, you can place your left hand down for support, creating some stability. Gazes over that left shoulder. Come back to frame your left foot. Take your left foot, cross it over. Take your left leg, cross it over your right and plant that left foot down on the mat. On the outside portion of your right leg. Inhale, both arms come to lift. Exhale, twist toward your left side, bind on top of the left thigh. Twisting gazes over that left shoulder. Every exhale is twisting you deeper. Come back to center. Unstack your legs, plant your feet flat. Knees are pointing up toward the sky. Reach your arms forward and slowly lower onto your back. Walk your feet toward your hips and then begin to walk your feet toward the edges of your mat. Allow both knees to rock inward, releasing any tension in the lower back. Sinking into this nice relaxing stretch. Begin to windshield wiper your knees back and forth. Allow your left knee to draw inward toward the center of the mat. Take your right leg and bring it up toward your chest. Bind your right ankle on the left outer thigh to open up the left hip. allowing gravity to do its work, not forcing anything, keeping both shoulders glued to the mat. Unbind your right foot, bring both knees back up to face the ceiling, and then drop your right knee toward the mat. Pull left knee toward chest and then bind left outer ankle on outer right leg to open up the right hip. Unbind. Uncross left leg, plant both feet down, and walk your feet in so that way they're hips with, hips with distance. Plant your palms face down on the mat beside your body, 
and slowly begin to press into your heels, lifting your hips up off the mat, pushing yourself up into a bridge, squeezing your glutes at the top, finding a little bit of hip opening here. And then as you're drawing your chest upward, you're lifting your chin away from your chest, finding some length in your neck, the front of your neck, your spine. Gently lower your hips down. Draw your knees up to your chest. Wrap your arms around your knees. Give yourself a tight squeeze. Maybe rock from side to side. And then slowly extend your left leg onto your mat, followed by your right. Flip your palms face up, let your toes sway out. Coming into Savasana pose, final pose of the practice today. Allowing yourself to sink into this pose, surrendering to the experience. There's nowhere to go, nothing to do. Just being here in this moment. Noticing any tensions that might still be lingering in the body and allowing yourself to breathe into it. Allowing the breath to carry toward any portion of the body that's still holding on, still needing control. Allowing the breath to open the smallest corners that are hard to reach. We often don't realize that Savasana is the hardest posture for us to find ourselves to find ourselves in. I, the idea of just being present and experiencing the moment for what it is. When we allow the body to release, energy naturally flows through our chakras. We have this equilibrium between being grounded and being uplifted feeling supported by Mother Earth, feeling connected to the cosmos. If you find at any point that your mind is taking you away from the present moment, bring your attention to your heart. Notice the rhythm of your own heartbeat as it pumps the blood through your system, enabling your body to be alive, enabling your cells to receive oxygen to move you throughout your day. Take a deep inhale all the way into the belly, allowing your chest to expand, holding the breath at the top, and then deeply exhale, squeezing the abdomen, releasing the air. Hold empty for a moment. Allow yourself to feel what it's like to become empty. 
Slowly begin to return your breath to normal. Bend your knees, plant your feet flat, and then begin to draw your knees toward your chest. Wrap your arms around your knees, coming in for a tight squeeze and gently roll onto your left side body, taking a moment here to let the energy settle. Take a deep inhale and exhale. As you feel ready, begin to push yourself up, meeting me in a cross-legged position to close our practice together. Find your hands in prayer in front of your chest. Draw your thumbs up between the brow points. May there be peace in your thoughts. Draw the thumbs toward your lips. May there be peace in your words. And draw the thumbs down to your sternum. May there be peace in your hearts. Namaste. Thank you for joining me for this practice. I hope that you feel more connected, more grounded, but also uplifted simultaneously. My name is Leah. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the box down below. If you would like to see more videos such as this, please subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for up and coming material. I look forward to hearing from each and every one of you. Thank you so much. Until next time.